death, eternal punishment for anyone who opens this casket. Come here. Greetings, folks out there in Darker Days land. This is your host, Vince, along with my co-host, Mark. And this will be the Darkling episode number 11, as Mark has written down. (laughs) Mark, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Vince. Yeah, the uh, Darker Days Summer of Celebration carries on. Uh, Just a few days after episode 10, and we're back with another one for you. Oh, yeah. Another uh, exciting little Darkling for you tonight. Uh, So, Mark... How's the uh, summer going for you so far? Hot and sticky, which is how I like it. That's that's something we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sharing too much there again, am I? Actually, it's nice and cool here in uh, the great state of Pennsylvania. We've uh, reached a high of uh, 60. <laughs> so uh, we're not dripping hot and sweat like you. Uh, it's just disgusting over here, it really is. Yeah. So, Mark, when I reached on that mail... Oh, wrong show, never mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, no mailbags for the Darkling. Well, we should have, like, a mini mailbag. Maybe, like, um... A don't mail know, pouch. A, like a pouch, yeah, or like or one of those yeah. knapsacks or something. Every, every mail needs a good pouch, that's very true. <laughs> a, European, <laughs> a European bag, there we go. <laughs> Whatever you guys call it over there in uh, the UK. Satchel. A satchel, that's what you guys call it? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a, a special guest with us tonight, Mr. Malleus from the forums. Mr. Malleus, how you doing there? Doing good, thank you. He's joining us for the uh, episode number 11 tonight to talk about... What are we talking about, Mark? I forgot. Murder. Murder? Murder City, yes. The once popular... No. The very popular board game slash card game slash role-playing game that White Wolf had uh, put out a couple years ago. I think it was 2008 it came out. It is a fun game. I have to say I had blast playing this game at the convention when I went to it recently, Mark. Uh, basically, I'm going to just real quick just say, uh, if you have a significant other, a spouse, whatever, that doesn't like role-playing but likes board games and you like role-playing, this is a game for you to get them into role-playing. This game not only gives you a chance to, to show your role-playing abilities, it gives you the chance to sit down and play with cards and dice, too. So, <laughs> it's a load of fun. Mark, it's a, good, a, a good gateway drug, then, for, uh, for yeah. board games to role-playing games. Definitely. Uh, if you take the time to sit down with this with, with someone, you should uh, actually convince them. And like, wow, this is what a role-playing game is about, too? Yeah, why not? <laughs> cool. So, uh, Mark, you had a chance to play it at all, or no? I have not actually no um, conventions are a little bit thin on the ground over here, uh, and we're we're pretty much tabletop oriented in our in our current group. And the one guy who was well into board games has headed off to the other side of the country. Um, hi Neil, hope you're doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, so he may well have played it, but I haven't. Uh, but you said you picked it up at a, at a con. Was that Mepicon or is this a different one? Yeah, that was at Mepicon. We played it. Cool. So you can always do Mark Con 2011. You know, hold your own. Yeah, but nobody would come. I mean, you know, let's face it. It'd just be me and my Barbie mic. <laughs> well, you know, the kids might come. That's true, that's true. You do have the Barbie mic, so they need to be entertained. <laughs> so what was the game like, then? Tell me about it. Well, um, pretty much uh, every player gets... it's. Well, when you first see the box, you think Hunter the Vigil automatically because of the colors and the style of the box. And it, there's everybody gets a murder case board. So everyone has their own mini, like, little fold-out board which gives you uh, a detective personality, and it gives you some information about the detective, tells you the detective's weaknesses and his strengths, or her strengths, what their uh, ability in the game to do. Uh, and then throughout the game... So wait, so, so that's kind of like a character sheet then? Yeah, it's kind of like your character sheet. Okay, Actually, cool. you probably could refer to, refer to a character sheet. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, let me see here. I'm looking at my notes. <sighs> They've got all, a little fluff all around here. 
Uh, there's six turns in the game before it's turned over, and uh, each person, uh, the object of each round is to collect as many credits and, and pieces of information about your case that's assigned to you. Uh, you can, on your turn, you pick up a case card, and say it, it says uh, murder in a suspect's name. So what you do each turn is you pick a, you have three or four different types of investigation you can do, such as evidence investigation, you can investigate like a murder weapon, or you can mm -hmm. interrogate a suspect, or uh, you can talk to an eyewitness, and you pick a card out, and then you can read the information on the card, and you can either act it out, or you can just put it down and play it. We chose to act it all out. It was kind of fun. <laughs> and there's enough flavor and, and information on the card to allow you to, to get into the scene and play it out if you want to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can make it up along the way, too. Okay, uh, cool. You do need one person to play, like, the judge or GM, but I'll get into that in a few minutes. Hmm. Uh, and there's also, a, there is D6s that we use in this game, and that will determine, uh, also to see who goes first every round, and it also determines when you want to bring a case to, uh, the court. So to try a case, pretty much. So, so you're, you're accumulating evidence cards and pieces of information, which right. you can then take, take to, to court, as it were. Right. Okay. So right. every turn you t you pick up, say I want an investigation card for an eyewitness, you pick it up and you try to match it to the murder case card you have. You can have up to three murder case cards on your uh, your board at one time. After everyone gets their uh, evidence together, the person that's judging things will say, do you want to bring anything to the court? Now you need three pieces of evidence to go to court. If you don't, well, you still can go to court to try a case, but you won't have as many dice to roll. So, so the evidence cards give you dice, right? They, they, Each they, evidence they, they card build, they build your dice pool, kind of thing, right? Each evidence card will say, uh, for example, f murder weapon found, knife, and it'll describe it and where it was found, how it was found, and it'll say plus three dice. Oh, okay, right, right, right. I'm seeing it. Yeah. So, when you when you try the case, you bring it to court. The person left of you is your adjudicator for the court case. That person can either say, okay, the case goes through with no problem, or I uh, contest that case. Now, what you can do throughout the game is take leg take these cards for investigation and falsify evidence. <laughs> cool. And you say, like, the murder card you had was for murder case A, and it was color red. Say you find another piece of evidence for another court case, you can jam it on the red one without anybody knowing, and then try the case, and then the person adjudicating has to figure out if whether you're telling the truth or not. So, oh, nuts. if the guy stamps it, you get to go through, you roll your dice, you have to beat a number on the card, you try the case. But if the person says, well, I can test it, you have to flip the cards over and show it, and if it's wrong, then your case gets thrown out, and you have to start all over at scratch one, and you don't get any little credit uh, cards, which is pretty much money in the game. Uh, okay. And there's so also kind of, it's, it's, it's sort of combining um, like uh, uh, like a liar's dice with Cluedo, with a little bit of role playing and, and dice in there. That's kind of interesting. And there's also a card called Legwork, which everybody gets one of those cards every round. And we like to call that we dub that the screw er, the screw the other person card in the game. <laughs> uh, you got to have one of those. Yeah, it enables you to uh, some of the cards enable you just to throw down at any point in time to screw up another person's court case or if they find a piece of evidence you can go bam no you don't find that evidence or something like that it's just <laughs> you have to be careful because you can backstab someone and then later on they may be the person adjudicating your your murder case oh cool so Malleus have you seen this game at all? I've seen it in the uh, the shop a couple of times um, I haven't got a chance to play it but, uh, it uh, does look interesting from what you say, I got a few questions. Definitely, uh, it says on the box here that uh, it's recommended for two to five players. Um, mm -hmm. With that uh, sort of GM role, uh, would you recommend actually more than two players? Uh, you can. The only reason why I think he was the GM was because he was teaching us. I don't actually think you need a GM because. Uh, the person left you is mostly the person deciding what happens to your court case, so... Mostly he was just handing out cards, so anybody can hand out cards. Right. So from your experience uh, playing, uh, how many players do you think would be the optimum number of players? I would say four. Four? 
Yeah, we had all five, and it was so much fun. And I could see it with being less just as fun, but I think with two people it would be kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just you and one person back and forth. I mean, you'd know what's going to happen. You know who's going to screw you and who's not. So, yeah. <laughs> when there's five people at the table, I mean, you don't know who's going to throw down what card and when they're going to do it or how they're going to screw you over. Or... <laughs> and of course, we all focused on one guy and we picked on him and we just kept throwing down <laughs> cards. <laughs> that sounds about right. What interests me about it is, I mean, just looking at this, how easy do you think it would be to incorporate this into a, um, a World of Darkness role playing game? Uh, if there's an investigative scene or series of investigative scenes in your tabletop role playing game, how easy would it be to use Murder City to to, to play those scenes down? I mean, could you stack the deck in a certain way such that uh, the, the the cards represent stuff that happens in your tabletop game? Is that would that be easy to do? Because I'm always interested in looking at ways to bring these things into a the tabletop arena. Or does it or does it really only work as a standalone? It only works really as a standalone. I can't really see. Well, I'm, I'm trying to thinking about it. Maybe as a storyteller, you can sit down and look through the whole game itself and take the murder cards and and then. Maybe plot out a couple scenes that could, that could as be cool. like seeds or ideas, because yeah. they have some pretty cool things in there. I mean, I don't remember the exact wording of all of them, but there was some really interesting uh, murder scenes and and way people were killed and things that like you could probably use it for uh, your your story and your game. Just yeah, I would do that. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, actually. Well, the tarot deck for mage, you could use it in that way as well because of because uh, they're so rich in, in mage-oriented symbolism. You could whip these cards out and draw adventure seeds out of those. So, now, Malleus, before we came on air, you mentioned that you'd seen a couple of other uh, games. There was a vampire one that you'd seen. Yeah, there's uh, there's actually a few uh, vampire games out by White Wolf. Uh, one is the the Prince of the City, I believe. Um, it's uh, much more publicized than the other of the two. Um, the other one was uh, a a card game, uh, self-contained card game. I haven't really seen it uh, anywhere else than uh, this one shop I went to. But uh, yeah, those are the two other games I know of uh, that if Wolf, White Wolf produces that are self-contained. Hmm. Cool. I guess so. Well, I, I didn't even know they were they were getting so heavily into uh, board and card games, you know, beyond uh, things like Vitas. Um, but this, I mean, Vince, you said that this thing is what about ninety minutes? Yeah, uh, it took us six, about six turns. Is nothing at all. I mean, that's a really that's a really fast, snappy game. That's ideal. Well, you have to remember, six uh, turns would be going around once for everybody to do their uh, their investigation. Yeah. And they're picking up their cards and deciding what they want to do. And then you have to go back around another time to do uh, if they want to see if anybody wants to bring the case to court. So there could be 12 rounds if you think about it. So, Right, right, right. But generally the first couple rounds go quickly. Yes, Mark? That was Malleus. Oh, yeah, I was I was just gonna ask, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the learning curve is to this game? Like, how how easy can someone just jump into it? About ten fifteen minutes, so it's, it's nice. not very difficult to learn at all. No, and in fact, it, I, I learned it within fifteen minutes. I got the gist of the game and was having fun throwing down cards and. Cool. So Excellent. it's cards. It's cards and it's dice. Cards, and dice. That's what that's what you get in the box. Yeah, cards, dice, and um, a, a, like a, your own mini board with your detective. On what his strengths oh, and right, weaknesses. Your, your character sheet, right? Yeah, it's and, kind uh, of like uh, a placeholder are those, board. Are those, sorry, carry on. It was like a placeholder board. Think of, uh, I can't think of a game that used to do that, but it's like a placemat type thing. You put all your cards on it. You put it, you, you, okay. you, you like your well, character. The new, apparently almost. the new Warhammer game uses that quite a lot. Oh, really? I haven't seen it, but I've, uh, yeah, I've heard about it. So wait, so this, this character sheet that you've got, is it is it predetermined? So there's like a handful of different pre-statted detectives in the box, or can you can you make up your own guy? Um, the, the, he told us that you could make up your own guy, but I didn't see any rules for that. So I don't yeah. know, maybe he had a different book I didn't see. <laughs> but there were five... <laughs> the 300-page hardcover GM's Guide to uh, Murder City. Yes, that was coming out soon. But um, <laughs> By Eddie Webb. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, there were five pre-genned uh, folder boards uh, that he gave us, and he just said, everybody just pick one, and we all grabbed one, and that was the end of it. Okay. Fun. Yeah, so it was, it was a real fun game, and I really enjoyed it. 90 minutes it took us, and uh, after that we won the play again, so... 
And did you did you buy a copy, or were you just playing at this guy's table? No, I, I have a copy. It was uh, it was about it was about ten bucks at the convention. Oh, that's cheap! Wow. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I think it retails for almost like twenty five, but they had it. Uh, there was a, there was a vendor selling White Wolf stuff for pretty cheap. I don't know why, but. Remember I told you I got all those books free? Oh, yeah, no, you got an incredible haul at Mepicon. That's true, you did, yeah. yeah. I got Outrageous. Vampire of the Dark Ages. Um, No, no, Dark Ages Vampire, sorry. Yeah. I got that hardcover book, Almost Perfect Condition, for like five bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. The, the guy to Sabat, things like that. A couple bucks. Uh, they were selling uh, New World of Darkness stuff, buy one, get one free. Cool. So, I mean, that was... Uh, Portal Gaming, I think it was their call. You can find them online. I think they're portalgaming.com, okay. and they do the same deal online. So I, I don't know. They were telling me, which I found interesting because Eddie didn't comment on this, but they said that they were getting rid of all the hardcovers because White Wolf was going to uh, strictly PDF, but Eddie didn't but say. Yeah, no, but I mean, if you look, White, White Wolf have just released a print schedule f- uh, yeah. for later this year with a handful of books coming out, so that's clearly not the case. But. Yeah, that's what I said to him. He, he said he had it on good authority, and I was just like, yeah, well, who's your authority? And he wouldn't tell me, so. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, your authority is BS. <laughs> yeah. Our authority is Eddie Webb, so no. Yeah, I know. I was like, we, we, we talked to Eddie Webb, and he, well, he said no. I mean, he could not be telling us the truth, but <laughs> I highly doubt that. No way. No, not Mr. Webb. No. Who's at a who's at a, col- uh, a company party right now? Are they having a party? Yeah, Excellent. We'll, White Wolves having their, I guess, their 4th of July bash tonight or something. Oh, cool. Or I should say CC Publishing. Whatever they're called. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So, uh, anybody have any closing comments about this game before we hit off the uh, sunshine here? I think it sounds really interesting. I'm going to see if I can try down a copy. I mean, uh, my my girlfriend's a gamer, um, although she hasn't played any games since I uh, TPK'd her character in the first round of the Tomb of Horrors a little while ago. <laughs> but uh, this might be an interesting way to get her back at the table. Did she realize that going into Tomb of Horrors, you're going to die? They made it all the way to the end, and wow. then they disturbed Sararak, and he wiped the entire party out in five rounds. So, wow. yeah. Way to kill your wife. Yeah, I did her first. Yeah, so <laughs> can't believe I was that stupid. <laughs> did you sleep on the couch that night? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to hit the road now. Mally, do you have any closing comments on this? Yeah, I'd like to say that the uh, the game sounds like a definitely great party game for uh, if you got a few people around to sit down and play a game. And happy Canada Day to everyone in Canada. Oh, yeah. Yes, happy Canada Day, that's true, yeah. And we'll be uh, reaching, well, at this point, uh, <laughs> recording this show, the 4th of July will be well over, so. <laughs> a little confusing on the days here because of Mark screwing up my schedule, but. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. You can, just, you can just suck it up. Yeah, be quiet, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be hitting the road, and uh, thank you, Malice, for joining us tonight to uh, thank you. chat with us. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, mate. Good stuff. All right, take care, guys. All right, take care. Bye. Have a good night, folks. This is Vince signing off for Mark, and this is Darkling number um, blah, 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 blah.